Hi, my name is Amy. Welcome back to my channel. By now, most of you have probably seen the Cause 2 Pass the Breast Challenge, and I thought that it would be a perfect time to work on the next Cause 2 Quarantine Challenge. Today's challenge is the costume in a day. Um, Kiralee Cosplay had this idea, and she thought we could all try to make a costume in an entire day. So today I'm going to work on making another costume for my LARP character. Todd and I go to, uh, or belong to a LARP group and we have two events a year, one in June and one in August. So our next event is coming up pretty quickly and I need a second costume or at least a backup in case something happens to my original. Plus, I think I could make it a little better and, and have it fit more nicely, in which case it will become my primary costume. So that's what we're going to do today. I am making a white linen tunic, leggings, and I may, if I run out of time, I may use store-bought leggings. I haven't decided quite yet. We'll see how the time goes. And if I have time, I'd like to make a waistcoat slash vest. Um, I'd also really like to make a cloak. Uh, but I don't know that I have time for that either. Um, the tunic is one that I have made several times, so it's a pattern I'm familiar with. It shouldn't be too difficult for me. Um, the biggest thing is that I need to make some adjustments to it. Um, when I've made it before, I haven't added trunk length, and as I've talked about in my corset video, I usually need to add about two inches trunk length to most patterns. So I'm going to do that, and then we'll get started. So hopefully I can get this done in a day. Oh, it is 8.45 a.m. on Monday, Memorial Day, May 25th in Oregon, USA. So here I am adding the trunk length to the pattern like I talked about. What I do is line up the edge of the pattern that gets cut on the fold with a line on my cutting mat. And then I make a cut perpendicular to that line on the cutting mat on the pattern and I spread it apart, add in another piece of paper and then tape it back together. And here I am repeating the process for the front piece. Those are both pieces with the trunk length added. I am cutting pieces of fabric off of my section of linen so that it doesn't distort the fabric when I cut the pieces out because the, the piece of linen I have is quite long and it hangs well over the end of my table. That is the front piece, and now that it's cut out, you'll notice I'm going to mark the darts for the bust. It has a bust dart at the side of each seam. This cutting mat I use is magnetic, and I love it. It is from DIY style and those that stack of blue circles are the magnets and they hold fabric down to the mat really really well i have cut swim fabric on it without any of the fabric shifting or moving around it's excellent it was a little bit spendy i'm not sure it's something i would have bought myself it was a birthday gift uh, but it is by far one of my favorite tools and once again, I'm just cutting out the back piece. Here I'm seeing if I can get one of the facing pieces out of that scrap, but it doesn't work. So I cut off a big enough chunk this time to get all the facing pieces and both skirt pieces out of the remainder.
one bad habit I have that I probably should rectify is that I don't press my fabric all the time before I cut. And one of the reasons is because this cutting mat is so amazing. I can uh, push the fabric flat and it actually stays flat. Um, but like I said, it's probably a habit I should get out of doing. Um, I just am lazy. I hate admitting that. Okay, so that's both skirt pieces cut out. And after I mark this pattern piece, I will be cutting out the facing. This is the back neck facing. And now this is the front neck facing. What I really love about this pattern is that you can make it out of just about any fabric, woven or knit, and it ends up looking beautiful. It fits well. I think it flatters just about any body style. So one of the reasons I'm pinning the sleeve with the sleeve cuffs so far from the end of the fabric is that I ended up adding, I believe it was three inches to the length of the sleeve just so I could get a flowier, floofier sleeve. And I did that, you can see here, I just used my clear ruler and made marks and then I joined all the marks. The other thing I did was add width to the bottom of the sleeve and width to the sleeve at about the elbow. So I left the width at the shoulder as the pattern has it. So after making all the marks, um, then I used my French curve to kind of billow out the sleeve at the elbow and then back in at the wrist. See that right here. I know several people who sew who mark notches by making a little clip into the seam allowance. I've tried that a few times, but I end up losing my marks. So I still am really diligent about cutting out notches when I get to them. And that is all the pieces cut. So now it's time to start assembling. And here's a quick little shot before we assemble of how I fold up my fabric. I do have a video that I'll link above that shows in better detail how I do this. It's basically like bolting your fabric. I forgot to mention that the pattern I'm going to use to make this tunic is the Patterns for Pirates Timeless tunic. Um, this is the pattern. I'm going to be making the long sleeve version and I'm going to go ahead and keep the skirt length but I'm going to split it up the side so that I have uh, more ease for running. And um, I also made the sleeves more bell shaped so that they'll be nice and poofy. Um, the first step is to, our dogs are barking, that's awesome. The first step is to hem the facings and um, they recommend using a serger, but I'm going to do a rolled hem on my machine. As I said, the first step of this pattern is to finish the edges of the facing. And rather than use my serger, which is what's recommended in the pattern, I elected to use my machine and do a rolled hem. I love my rolled hem foot. It works really, really well. Sometimes it takes a little bit of fabric manipulation, but there you go. It's a beautiful hem. So one facing down and here's the second facing. 
So I'm not sure if I mentioned it before when I was talking about Patterns for Pirates, but they are an indie uh, pattern company and all of their patterns are available on PDF. Now that I have finished the facing hems, I'm going to assemble the tunic. Sew the shoulder seams, insert the sleeves, sew the side seams, add the facing, although the facing's before you do the side seams, and then add the elastic in the waist and the skirt. I am going to use French seams to make this because that will help give the seams a little extra strength in addition to finishing the seam allowances so that they don't fray. Now I am attaching the front facing to the back facing at the shoulder seams and once again I'm using French seams so when I trim the threads I also trim the seam allowance down. Um, and then I press the seam allowance open and then over to the other side and here I am stitching the second seam of the shoulder seams on the facing. And here I decided to go ahead and mark the quarter points for when it was time to add it to the neckline just so that I had that step done and out of the way. So the next step is to sew the bust darts. There is one on each side um, coming in horizontally from the side seam. So I did that and then, then now the next step is to attach the front bodice to the back bodice at the shoulder seams. Once I did that, I trimmed down the seams, pressed them open, and then pressed them right sides together, and did the second part of the French seam on the shoulder seams. Now I am pinning the facing to the bodice. I did not use a French seam on the neckline simply because the facing is there and it ends up understitched and uh, so the seam is protected and won't fray. I did trim the seam allowance down quite a bit though, so there wasn't a whole lot of bulk uh, when it came to turn it right side out. And here I am understitched, and I understitched about an eighth of an inch away from the seam on the seam allowance and the facing piece. Apparently I broke a needle in my machine. I don't remember doing that, but luckily it's very easy to change. So now that the facing is in and pressed, it is time to add the sleeves. So once again, I'm using French seams here as well. So I pinned the sleeve to the bodice, wrong sides together. I made sure to match up the notch on the sleeve with the shoulder sleeve of the bodice and the double notches were towards the back and the single notch was towards the front. And I pinned in both sleeves following the same method. So what I normally do is pin that center notch and then pin the sleeve to the sh bodice at the arm side and then I ease the fabric between. So here I am stitching in the sleeves. Once the sleeves were stitched in, I removed the pins, uh, pressed them, and then turned them right sides together and stitched them again, thus creating the French seam. Before I sewed up the side seams, I went ahead and did the rolled hem on both sleeves so that the rolled hem would be encased in the side seam. Then 
The other thing I did, uh, you can see here, is that I'm adding some bias tape to the sleeve, about three inches up from the end of the sleeve, and I end up using that as the elastic casing before I sew up the side seams. Here you can see me marking the placement for the casing on the second sleeve. And for the bias tape, it didn't really need to be flexible, so I just cut a couple strips of the linen and um, pressed the edges in and then sewed it down where I had marked it. Once both sides of the bias tape were sewn down, I inserted the elastic and I secured it at both ends so that I could sew the side seam. When I pinned the side seam together, I made sure to match up the seam at the underarm and also at the bottom of the bodice. And just like the other seams, I sewed this with a French seam. So I started wrong sides together and then I will trim the seam, turn it and sew it right sides together. And here I am stitching the side seam. trimming the side seam down so that I can press it and sew it right sides together. I really did press it, I promise. I just didn't film that part. And with that, the bodice is done. I just will need to add the skirts in a little bit. The first part of the skirts was that I hemmed the bottom of both skirts and I hemmed both side edges of the skirts before I attached the front to the back. And I did that because I am leaving that split in the side so I wanted to, to have a nice finish since the rest of it's going to be closed with the French seam. And right here I was marking how far down the side I'm sewing um, to leave an opening for the slit. And now we're pinning it right sides together and we'll sew it one more time. I have to correct myself. I forgot I did not sew the bottom hem of the skirts with the rolled hem foot. I went ahead and did a quarter inch double turn hem and sewed it with my machine after I had done the rolled hems on the sides. Now it's time to attach the bodice to the skirt and I did that first by making sure that the bodice and the skirt were lined up at the waist seam with the side seams matched up, wrong sides together, and I stitched them together using a quarter inch seam allowance, I believe. Um, and I went ahead and finished this with a French seam 
even though you'll see in a little bit that that may not have been necessary. Trimming down the seam allowance so that I can turn it and stitch again. And here I am stitching the second line of the French seam. The unique part about this tunic is that when I stitched the second seam of the French seam, I did it at about an inch wide instead of at just a half an inch. And that is because you'll see here the seam allowance is pressed up and top stitched on the edge so that it can be used as the elastic casing for the waist. And now I am feeding the elastic into the waist casing that is formed by that waist seam. If only elastic actually went in this quickly. So all the elastic is in and I am stitching it together and then stretching it out just to distribute it evenly and oh no. The elastic was twisted, so I cut the elastic apart, fixed the twist, and restitched it together. Once I did that, I got it even distributed and top stitched the opening in the casing closed. And with that, I'm going to add a top stitch around the neckline just because the facing wasn't really behaving and staying put and the tunic is finished. So this is the first piece completed in my costume in a day. Uh, the tunic is finished. Rather than sewing the side seams completely uh, in the skirted part, I left a slit there so that I had room to run. I think I would have had plenty of room to run anyway, but just in case. Um, waist is good. I added several inches to the length of the sleeves and then um, put a, an elastic casing about three inches from the end of the sleeve so that the cuffs are nice and floofy. And I also added a little bit of width to the sleeves so the sleeves are much longer. So now that this is done, it's time to work on the next piece, which is either the cloak or the vest. I haven't decided yet. Uh, but here's a good look at it. Fits really well. Fits exactly how I wanted it to. And it's done. So this is the shirt on with my leggings and my boots for Clark. So that is my tunic finished. I'm going to end up not getting the entire costume done in one day that I wanted to because our son and his girlfriend showed up unexpectedly today. So we spent the day with them, which I would much rather do than make a costume. So thank you for watching. Um, when I do get the other pieces made, hopefully I'll have a video for those. There is a playlist for all of these costume in a day challenges. So I will link that down below as well as Kiralee Cosplay's channel. Uh, she's the one, as I said earlier, who kind of instigated this challenge. Thanks for watching.